Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Low Mode and today on Hot Low Mode we are coming to you with your BAFTAs Red Carpet Fashion Roast and Review for the year 2024. As per usual, every year I have to figure out what the BAFTAs actually stands for which I think is British Academy of Film and Television Awards. I think I got it. After a few years, you, you finally start to pick up what these acronyms really mean. And I'm gonna Google it later and I'm gonna be wrong. So, without further ado, we have a lot to get through, so let us begin. And you know what? I have not started with a British accent this time around, which I think is really, really intriguing, because we're also in the midst of London Fashion Week, and so I get myself British very quickly. I get really excited, and I just want to talk in certain ways, and so you'll hear me throughout the entirety of the video saying little comments and tidbits and bits and bobs here and there. But unfortunately, something I'm not very excited about is Iowa Debris' little look from Boutique. Vanita. Now here's the thing with Io. I appreciate that she's wearing Bottega. Listen, love a Bottega. I don't like the dress. I'm sorry, listen. The peach is a nice color, don't get me wrong, but the issue is this halter neck, the draping of it at the bust area where it sort of all folds onto itself and then becomes a halter. If that's the intention, great. Happy for everybody involved, but I love the beautiful artistry of hand doing dumplings. Unfortunately, I don't always love them when they are placed as a sort of aesthetical sort of bust piece on a red carpet gown. I just don't think it works. I think the straps look, at least on one side, a little bit wonky as well. It's just not great. It's really not great construction. Bottega doesn't do too much red carpet, and they're usually not really super out there. So I think it's also something that if we're going to do something this, this simple, it really has to deliver, and this is not delivering, unfortunately. I do like the cape with the feathers and the furs all sort of jumping out of it. It's cute, it's nice, but again, I, I'm not really seeing where everything's coming in. I think the silver shoes with like the cream gloves, there's just a lot happening, but it's not all working together. It's not a symphony of experiences and beautiful textures and textiles. It's more of like a cacophony of things hitting me, and I don't like it. I don't like being hit. I do like Bottega, I do like Io. I'm not gonna be like, Ugh! but. No. Next up we have Barry Keoghan. Skewer me in the comments if I pronounce it wrong, I apologize. Also, I just will say with respect to my ancestors, Gaelic, it's a little bit of a crazy language. Just putting it out there. What the spelling is, is not what is gonna come out of your mouth. Here, Barry is wearing a Burberry suit. I believe, I don't believe that it is a boiler jumpsuit sort of style, cause, I'm pretty positive it's not. The color might lead me to believe it's a little boilery, suity. I am intrigued by it. I think there's certain elements that I do really appreciate. I like the epaulettes up top. I think that's very cool. Buckles going on as well. And I like the idea of the hardware moving throughout it. I like it on the lapel. I think it's cute. I think the silver really works. I think that the idea of a pocket, but doing it in a zipper form sort of is a different take on menswear and traditional tailoring, the pocket and all that jazz. And then bringing in the silver hardware. I do appreciate that. I think it's cool. I think it's different. I think it's a fun way for Daniel Lee, who's at Burberry, to take on the different elements of tailoring sort of details. But I don't know. There's something about like, it's not the pant. I mean, maybe it's the pant just because it looks a little wrinkled. And it's really just like him moving. I'm not that mad about it. It's just something all all together isn't really selling me on it. I like the shirt and the tie and the jewelry I believe is all from Boucheron. The watch is Omega. That's all working. Maybe it's the boot. Maybe I think that the boot doesn't really work with this almost sort of blue green. Yeah, maybe it's the color. I don't know. Something with the pant and the color I think is throwing me off, but I do really like the details. Like the jacket a lot. I think it's really trying to push for something different. I just think from the waist down, it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? It's it, my natural instinct is saying, mm. so I think it might be the boot. I think it might just be not the cut of the pant. Maybe it's the length of the pant. Maybe it's just the wrinkling. I don't know, but from the waist up, really enjoy. Waist down gives me a little pause. But I'll be honest, like I don't hate it. It's not a hate, it's not a hatred. Next up is a pleasant surprise I was really not expecting, Bradley Cooper. I don't know if they confirmed it, but maybe he's dating Gigi Hadid and like Gigi, I would just like to thank you because I never thought that I would ever say, oh wow, Bradley Cooper's kind of serving. So if you are the reason for this, we appreciate you, queen. Now listen, Bradley is wearing this pretty intriguing length jacket because he just normally does like a tuxedo or a suit and like calls it a day. But I love this double breasted black jacket that has these little 
silvery pearl buttons. I can't really read who has made it from the buttons and I apologize, but I like the fact that the length hits the knee and then he's wearing like a little bit of a baggy trouser, a white shirt, black tie. It's just like a different silhouette from him. It's not something that we normally see. And so, yeah, I like it. Is it pretty simple? Is it like amazing? In terms of Bradley Cooper menswear, yes. And so I will take it and be very happy and marry. Next up we have Carrie Mulligan who is wearing Christian Dior. It's a black fitted ball gown. Really not much to write home about at all. Standard gown, fair. Nothing really crazy. It's a, it's a black silk. There seems to be some sort of little patch of black velvet sitting in between these sort of draped bra bust coverings. And then maybe the black velvet sort of reaches around in the back. Could I go into a reference point and say, oh, it's a Dior from 1948, 1940, 51, blah, 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 blah. Sure. But at the same time, like, is this dress really worth all of that effort to pull something off the shelf and, and do a little deep dive? No, it's really not. It's just not memorable. It's not really exciting. I don't really find anything about it really like wowie zowie. Maybe there's a reference point in there, but again, just looking at it, it's kind of a dud. Do I think it fits well? Sure. Do I think it's pretty? Absolutely. Will I ever think about this dress ever again? Absolutely not. We can all literally watch it leave my brain for forever in three, two, one. Next up we have Kate Blanchett who's wearing Louis Vuitton. Here's the thing. It's a maroon floor length sleeveless dress. And I actually kind of, I like this. I think that it's cool, slick, a little modern Kate Blanchetti. That is the adjective for Kate. I do think that the little elements of leather at the neck that sort of create like a mock neck as well as the little pieces that jut out at the shoulders and sort of create like a cap sleeve but it's not really a cap sleeve is cool. I think it's different. I think it brings in a little bit of a different texture. The thing that I also think is really really smart is the jewelry. I don't know who's done the jewelry but I love the fact that it sits around the neck perfectly. It's, I think it's a great little area there. And then as it moves down, and I normally, uh, body jewelry is a tough thing to sell, but the fact that it comes down and sort of sits in between the breast and then moves around right at the hip to sort of emphasize the waist and sort of cut in there, I think is really, really smart. It's a great way to do body jewelry. And then the rest of the dress just fits her phenomenally. I think that has a nice little subtle train. There's not really anything that's demanding attention. I think it lets the body jewelry do the talking. It also just lets the fit of the dress do the talking. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about if you're gonna do something really, really simple, it just has to be clean, well fitted, really well done. And this I think is a good example of that. So, as per usual, Kate Blanchetti, she is ready. Next up we have Celine Song, who is wearing Loewe. Now, listen, it's a pretty simple double-breasted black suit. The pant fit is fine, it's not great, it's not bad. The shoe's very Loewe, sort of black little loafer, but it's very rounded at the toe. She has some sort of bag, I don't know which Loewe bag that is, but I know that it's a Loewe bag because it has the little wrap around thing on the side. Maybe it's the flamenco bag or a take on the flamenco bag. But the thing about this look that I think is also very cool, not super crazy, but it's the idea of the boutonniere that's sitting on her left lapel. And it's a bunch of flowers instead of it just being one flower. And also these flowers are actually all crystallized. Some of them are a little bit white at the top. And then as it moves down, they're a little bit golder, a little bit more yellow. It's actually a reference to the runway because there were these beautiful sort of cascading crystallized flower tops that were paired with pants. And I think it's just that nice subtle little way of bringing in little elements from the collection that at the same time you know you know and you love to know but also deconstructing this very sort of high conceptual runway look and bringing it into like accessories into jewelry things like that because it's kind of cool to see for me because I don't think a lot of designers usually do that. I have to say Celine Song working with Loewe I think she's oftentimes let her self really sort of be a part of Jonathan Anderson's world. And I'm happy to see that partnership because I think it really truly does work well. Next up we have Killian Murphy who is wearing, I'm not sure, I apologize. I tried to find it, I couldn't. If they're not sending the press releases, we can only do so much. But I do like this full black ensemble. I thought it was maybe Saint Laurent, but I don't think it is. And so I'm leaning maybe towards more of like a Xenia just because it has this nice oversized feeling to it. Maybe it's like a fear of God, I don't really know, but I love this coat. It looks to be, in my opinion, some sort of black wool. And it has this intriguing, I wanna say lapel, but I don't know anymore if it's actually a lapel 
or not. But it sort of comes down and like stops right, I would say, at the Willy Wonka eye view. It's just interesting. It's different. I think also the length of it is not normally what we see on red carpets. So I personally love to see it. I'm also intrigued by the shirt. I believe that it is a button down. It's just that it's a collarless button down. And the way that it also buttons seems to be overlaid so there's a piece of fabric over top which sort of hides that and gives it this more sort of rough texture very natural there's a cummerbund of some sort made out of some sort of like netting i can't really figure out what that is but i like it i think it's cool i think it adds a little bit of volume to the shirt and then the pants work the boots work it looks nice on him looks really good looks really chic overall i think it's a good way to do black on black on black on black i think it works i think it's intriguing. It's not too radical. It's not too out there. But again, devil in details is fine by me in this moment. Next up, Coleman Domingo. Okay, so he's wearing Boss, which is Hugo Boss. Coleman's been having a really, really good moment. And I appreciate what we are going for. I just think execution wise doesn't work. And I think it might just be the fabrics. It might also be the mixing of the navy blue and the black that just doesn't really land. I love the black silk bow as a sort of take on a tie. I love this very wide, very 80s power shoulder in a blue moiré silk. The cummerbund is there. I like the wide leg trouser. I just, again, I don't know if I like them all together. I do genuinely think that the blue is an odd choice here, just because everything else is either black or white. I think if we're trying to emphasize the silhouette of the blazer and the shoulders, because he's tall and he can really pull that off, I think, wholeheartedly, I think that a black jacket would have been the thing to utilize to make sure that the proportions were proportioning. The pants are fine. They're okay. I don't hate them. I don't love them. Again, he's really tall, so like he really can sort of do these elongated silhouettes, and it works well on him. I just think that there's something about the jacket, and also like maybe it's because he has his hands in his pockets, he's not standing straight down. Something also just about the shoulder pads look like the sleeves are not necessarily matching up in terms of volume. It just doesn't feel like they flow well. It seems almost like they're a little thin, thin little noodles and they come out of this gigantic sort of big bulging shoulder pad. And so I just don't know if it really works, which sucks. Cause I appreciate what he's going for. I think Coleman always tries. I also think Boss is definitely trying to be a little bit more out there and working with Coleman to be fashion. It's just, again, the execution doesn't really land. And so it makes it an A for effort, not an A for execution. It more so just makes it and execution. Next up we have Divine Joy Randolph, who is wearing none other than Robert One. Robert One, love, great designer, beautiful little haute couturier who really understands texture. So what we're seeing is this beautiful silk draped bodice that flows out into a train. And then there is this sort of low scooping draped skirt that then comes down and creates again this beautiful sort of black train. It's really intriguing. It's very Robert. We've been seeing a lot of these sort of low scooping drape styles. To me, it almost has like a little bit of a Charles James Penelope tree reference when it comes to the actual draping on the skirt. I like the divine Joy Randolph is like, no, 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 we're going to do fashion. I might not be like sample size, but like we're going to do fashion and we're gonna do it well. Cause even if you're like, oh, it's kind of okay, it's kind of fine. I think we also really have to understand that most of her looks are probably custom. And most of her looks then are designed by people that are not usually working with models of her exact size. Cause the thing is, Designers will work with plus size models and they'll only work within certain parameters. They're not working with size 14 through size 26. They're working with size 16. Like two years later, they do size 20 and then maybe they go back down to 14. They're never really working with somebody that is size zero in that same continuous way. I do think that while I understand people might say, oh, it's kind of black out of all the Robert One looks that you could see, kind of whatever. It's not really super exciting. I think it's super exciting to see Divine just continually pull off moments that are beautiful, that work, that fit her gorgeously. I think that's what I want to see. I'm not expecting the grand Pooba avant-garde stuff every single time because personally, I'd rather just see designers dressing somebody continuously well in a size that is not the normal stereotypical size that they just continuously are accustomed to. I think it's nice to see just, again, good, nice, solid moment, 
fashion girlies can fashion girl no matter what, as long as the designers understand what they're doing. And the fashion girly is rated fashion girl. I like the look. I think it works. I think it's a good, solid, little Robert One moment. Divine, we love. Next up, we have Deepika Padukone, and she is wearing Sabiasachi. Now, it's pretty much just a beautiful, fully sequined little sorry moment. And I do like it. I do think it works on her. I think the color is nice. I think the draping works. I think it fits her well. In the grand scheme of things, like, am I really excited by it? No. I think the color is okay, but like if we were to put that in just like a fitted dress context, I'd say, okay, I've seen a, a beige sequin dress before. Not really super exciting, not really super interesting. And I'm not saying that we see saris all the time on the carpet and all that, but it's a bit blah. And not really much to work with here, you know what I mean? It's, it's a beige sari. Maybe there was a little bit more color, a little bit more motif, a little bit more something fun, memorable, exciting to look at. Cause listen, she looks beautiful. As I always say, all these people are beautiful, but like that's the standard. You're all really hot. Sorry, but I was gonna say not sorry, but like, sorry, not sorry. You're all really hot. That's kind of the standard. We have to rate you based on what you actually bring to the table in terms of clothing. Great fit, mm, but at the same time, I need a little more. And also, again, I just wanna say, We've been seeing a lot of really, really cool Indian designers popping up on the Okachur calendar. So like, it's not like, oh, you know, I'm saying just wear Valentino and that's all, you, all she has to wear. No, 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 I don't wanna hear that. There's a lot of very cool things that we could be seeing that are really exciting, really intriguing, really pop, really make moments. You check the hot on Instagram, cause I don't know if you noticed, but the Indian designers, the girls are living, laughing and loving. So I just, I need more than beige sequins. Now, next up we have Dua Lipa and she is wearing Valentina, and she's wearing this very beautiful, gathered little micro pleated red dress, very Valentino-esque. And I do think that it fits her really well. I do think that it's pretty dressed, but again, I know people are gonna be like, oh, it's boring. I can't lie and say, ooh, so, so interesting. It's a pretty red dress that's micro pleated. But I do know that it definitely does have provenance in the world of Valentino. So I'm prepared to get skewered in about two minutes because I understand the hypocrisy of what I just did. But at the same time, Valentino Garavani himself did work for Jean Dese, who was an okachorie, who did make really, really beautiful sort of micro pleated styles. And the color red, very Valentino-esque, very much so the standard of the Valentino color world. But you know what my biggest issue with the dress, I think, really, really is? Pier Paolo Piccioli, when he does these sort of really gorgeous little micro pleat dresses, he does this really sort of tight line work that I assume is threading of some sort that creates a sort of dip and it allows you to continue the gather and continue that tightness. But what he normally does is like, he'll put it right underneath the bust line or he'll put it at the waist in a really sort of sharp line that wraps around the waist and sort of creates, with the use of the thread, somewhere to accentuate different aspects of the body. And I think my issue with this dress in particular is when I look at the waist, some Something seems a little bit off with the threading and I can't tell if it's that they were doing alterations to Dua's dress or like, and I don't mean Valentino, but I mean like her styling team and the tailor and they messed it up somehow or if it just sort of, it didn't work and the measurements were, I don't know what it is, but something about it, it looks really loose. And also as I look at it, the line to me move up and down and up and down, just subtly, just, just subtly. And it almost looks like a curve. And I don't think that maybe that's the intention. And I think that that also throws off the visual effect that I have come to expect from these micro pleating little gathering moments. I like the dress. I always like these styles. I think they're very much so Valentino to the core, but I think Pierpaolo has done a really good job of also making them his own. I just don't think that this one really delivered in terms of fit. And it's just, it's that waist issue is really throwing me off. And even as I zoom out, I can see it more and more. I think the dress besides that is really lovely, but at the same time, if it's gonna be that simple, I need it to deliver. Next up we have Emily Blunt. Now she is wearing Ellie Saab au couture. I love this. I think this is nice. I think this is sweet. I think this is very sort of signature Ellie Saab. Really gorgeous, pretty body conscious, but is full of gorgeous embellishments. It creates this beautiful little story of moving tchotchkiness and I think it works. I think the sheer is pretty good. It matches the skin tone pretty well. I think the silver is easy. It lays well. It sort of creates these lovely fountain sort of 19th, 18th, 20th, 
17th century sort of motifs, like, I don't know, whatever those are. And they, they look lovely. They look gorgeous. They look wonderful. The band around the waist to sort of hug in definitely pulls away a little bit at the bust line, but I don't expect it not to. And I do really, really, really love the bell sleeves. I think they're very chic. I think they're very beautiful. I also think that the sheerness, it really does work as we get down to sort of the knee area. You can see the knees sort of reconstitute themselves, whereas in the pelvic area, there's some sort of, I assume, skin tone matching brief that is sort of covering that area. It's a little bit more opaque. The one issue I guess I would say that I have is the jewelry. And I just think that it's a little big for its britches. It just sort of comes in at the neckline and, and I wish it maybe was a little bit tighter. But besides that, I think it's a nice dress. I think it works on Emily Blunt. I think that it fits in with what she's been going for as of recent. She looks nice. Next up we have Emma Corrin wearing Mew Mew. You're gonna look at that and you're gonna be like, Luke, that is awful. What is that? But I like to find the beauty in ugliness. And if Mutual Prada is involved, I definitely would like to find the beauty in the ugliness. I don't know what the, the, the vibe was for the look, but I do really like the crop top. I think it's cool. I like the gathering of it at, at the sort of upper bust. I think it's chic. I think it's elegant. I think the sleeves really, really work. Then we see skin and then there's a black brief of some sort and these very neonish tights in blue with these little silky big bows that sit right on both of the hip bones and a black sheer overlay on top. And like the thing that I'm gonna say about it is I love that Emma Corden just says, I'm gonna do it. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do it. Cause it's making me think, it feels very futuristic, it feels very styling, and unlike other looks that I talked about earlier, the black and the blue are the only colors that are trying to work together. And I mean, it's not 14 different colors all trying to, mm, there's that. I also just think Emma's been going for these sort of sheer skirt moments. Recently, we saw it a little while ago when they referenced a Princess Diana look and it was cool. I loved it. And here, I think that might be a little bit of a continuation of what we're seeing. Maybe it is a bit Mew Mew, but I don't really think this screams Mew Mew to me. This screams more Prada to me, just because it, it is quite out there. And at first I thought it was Armani. I'm gonna be completely honest. I was like, oh, Armani Priva, okay. It's not that. It definitely is like a futuristic styling. It's ugly. I don't wanna let you not think that it is cause it is, but I gotta appreciate and give it up for the fact that they put it together and said, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna go there. We went somewhere. And so, I don't know, it's making me think a little bit, which I like to see on a red carpet. Again, I know people are like, blah, blah, blah. that's fine. As much as you would like in the comments, be my guest, but I don't know. There's something about it that's just making me laugh. And I always say that to me, good fashion, makes me laugh. It's weird, it's wacky, it's ugly, it's tacky, but I do appreciate it. It's growing on me, like mold, but it's growing. I don't know what it is about the Emmas this evening, but they're going for it. I don't want to repeat myself, but you catch my drift. Emma Stone is wearing Louis Vuitton. It is this peach creation. It has a lot going for it. And now up top, we have, I believe it's a jacquard in sort of like really light peachy pink and like a coral orange to me that plays off of each other. And then down the side, again, I don't know why this couldn't have been in the back for my sake. There is buttons. And then on the other side is this big puff sleeve, which I'm sure is a reference to the Poor Things film and the fact that it references a lot of late 19th, early 20th century dressing. The puff sleeve doesn't stop there. It carries all the way through, very leg of mutton. And then it moves down in a sheer skirt that at the end, a quilted matte lacé band that wraps around the bottom of it. Very futuristic, very forward thinking, which again, like I know that it sounds like I'm making excuses because I kind of am, but just from understanding Nick Gere, who's the creative director of LV's Women's, you gotta think five years ahead. You can't think in the present. It's meant to be out there. And also I do think that, while I haven't seen Poor Things that Emma Stone stars in, I do think that this is probably a reference very directly to the costuming from the film. And so like, I appreciate that and I like that. I do feel that it does relate to the recent Nicolas Jeskier LV collections, which again, why it couldn't have been two puff sleeves? Yes, it's ugly, I agree. On the runway, I did really like them. I know, again, that they're 
ugly to a lot of people. They don't really make sense, but I do think that there are elements of them that are very cool. I like the idea of these big puff sleeves and the big sort of forward thinking, weird sort of take on, again, late 19th century dress, early 20th century dress. I just think that this particular version of it, I think there's something about the one shoulder that I don't like. I think it would have been better if it was double done because I think that's what we saw on the runway and I think those are a lot more digestible. It's a little skewed in one direction and it doesn't help itself being skewed to one side of Emma's body on top of a lot of things going on here in terms of textile and texture and big moments trying to fight and vie to be the center stage experience. I think that had the dress been done a little bit differently could have actually works. I think that this version, it doesn't work, which makes me upset because it did really like a lot of those dresses from that runway. If you're going to do a lot, it needs to be symmetrically a lot. Next up, we have Fantasia Barino, and she is wearing Ben Chalal, which is a brand I don't know, but I like what's happening here. I like this draping. It's like a dress, but then there's like a scarf that like wraps around and unwraps around. It feels like it frames Fantasia intriguingly. I think the black gloves are a really good way of sort of breaking the red. I don't really love the fit from like the pelvic area. I think there's something underneath that's sort of creating a little bit of lineage in there. Maybe it's the pose. I do appreciate all of this. You know what I mean? It's, it's pretty weird. It's pretty wacky. I think the shoes make sense. I like that she's wearing a designer that I have not heard of. There's some sort of avant-garde drapey sitch with the collar and this, it's weird, it's wacky. I'm intrigued, I like it. It's not doing too, 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 too much. It's just doing too, too much enough. Next up we have Florence Pugh who is wearing Harris Reed. Now this is a custom style, but it's based on a recent Harris Reed collection. I honestly really like the dress. I think that it works. I think that I knew it was Harris pretty much almost as soon as I saw it. And I knew the reference from the Harris collection, but I think that Harris did a really, really good job of taking the big, bold, wacky, wild elements that his own brand, Harris Reed, is known for. And I think he really sort of consolidated, commercialized, made it much more digestible, I think, to an everyday person. I think that the silver bodice that is pretty low cut and has like a sort of basque front is cool. The silver really pops on the black. I think he did a really, really good job of also refraining from trying to do too much. I think the black velvet is a signature of his brand. It's a fabric that I think is pretty much a go-to for him. And I think that the use of it to sort of create the bust and create a little bit of continuation between what's going on at the bust area down to the skirt and letting the silver in the middle sort of create a little bit of a road blockade it's cool. I think that I guess there's some sort of like stole cuff thing going on as well. It's intriguing. It works. The skirt is really allowing the silver to do all of the work. And I think that's just because that black velvet is so black hole like it really just sucks in all of the light. And I like to see that. I think this is really well done. I think it's different for Florence. I think that she's been trying a lot more and I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to see it. Next up we have Hannah Waddingham and she is wearing Oscar de la Renta. Listen, I like it. I think the fit of it is really, really good. I think this black lace that starts up at the neck and then is sleeveless sort of moves down and it's very much so 2D. It's a 2D sort of lace and sequin with little elements of stoning going on, bits and bobs. But as it reaches right around the pelvic area, it actually starts to bloom into 3D flowers that are made out of fabric. And so they sort of start to jut out. And then around the knee, we get this beautiful sort of little mermaid skirt, but it's a high low mermaid skirt. So in the front, we can still see like leg and all of that. And then in the back, it sort of creates a little train. I just think this is a nice dress. I think that it's easy. I think the silhouette works. I think the use of the high low and the mermaid, I think the use of the fit, a nice little look. I'm happy to see it. I feel like Hannah Waddingham, I don't get to talk about that that much, but definitely working it out. And I think this is a solid little Oscar moment. Next up, we have Kingsley Ben Adir, and he is wearing Gucci. Honestly, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just there. Salvador de Sarno is the creative director of Gucci. And in reality, as opposed to what we saw from Alessandro Michele, which was really whimsical and floaty and vintage and fun and da -da -da -da, he's much more about the craft. He's much more about sort of honing Gucci in. And to me, it's very Gucci of the 50s and the 60s 
probably 70s and 80s too, much more before the era of Tom Ford where Gucci was like a fashion brand, where more so it was a brand for leather goods and travel accessories. So to me, that's kind of the Gucci that we are moving back towards, the Gucci of Guccio Gucci, not the Gucci of Tom Ford or Alessandro or any of the other creative directors. I gotta say that I like it. I think the fit of the jacket is nice. I like the double-breasted style. I like that it's clean, that it's easy, it's minimal. There's a pin, like a silver Gucci double G logo pin, but it, it doesn't scream in your face, Gucci. And also I'm intrigued by the fact that it's only on the side that is not buttoned, so it does oppose another button on the other side. It's a little weird, it's a little different, but I kind of like it. I also just love the fact that it falls straight. It really has a sort of easy little silhouette. The pants are nice, they fit well, and then you have a beautiful little black leather Gucci loafer. It has the horse bit, the iconic moment of Gucci, the thing that really sort of was the popping off of Gucci in the mainstream was the Gucci loafer with the horse bit on it. Listen, I think it's very Sabato. Am I excited by it? No, but am I really intrigued and do I think that it actually very much so pushes forward the Gucci-ness of the brand? I think we all do want excitement and intrigue and interest, but I don't think that that is what he is currently tasked with doing. I think he is tasked with bringing Gucci into a reliable brand that is staying a certain course. I think that looks like this show off that very much so because I think Gucci tailoring is also a very big component of the brand. It's something that is constantly sort of looked at and it makes sense. And I don't think that this just is a, a black tuxedo and it's called a day. No, I think there's something a little bit interesting about it. Next up we have Lashana Lynch who is wearing Prada. Okay, so I was like, oh, this is a dress. Like, that makes sense. And it is based on the spring 2024 hardware, but these are really crystals, I think. The embellishments from that collection, which were done on pleated skirts and fringe skirts and things like that. But I was like, oh, this dress, I'm trying to figure out if it was like a jumpsuit. It's a cardigan. It's a cardigan. I feel vindicated. I feel validated. My consistent, never-ending love and quest for beautiful cardigans is being very much so shown on Lashana Lynch right now. And the fact that it is a they're almost floor-length cardigan, I think, makes it even better. It's a knit, which we love, and it's very rare that you really see knits on the red carpet. But I love the fact that it looks like a dress. I think it's a cool way of incorporating knitwear and cardigans and sort of recontextualizing them in the context of a red carpet and sort of having to sell gowns and long dresses and things like that. Why not do a floor length cardigan? I think that's so Prada. It's so incredibly Prada. I also love the embellishments. I think they're really chic. I think they really pop against this red. I love the shirt. This blue shirt with the grommets in it, I think is really sweet. I think that the blue is not white, but I still think it pops really, really beautifully against this maroon. I might have been calling this red the whole time. It's maroon. I apologize. Maybe it's wine. Il vino. But it does really pop without it just being a white shirt. I think the grommets, again, keep this whole idea of hardware, which is what we had seen in that collection as well. There were a lot of grommets done. I also like the jewelry. That little jewel sits right in the center. It's very chic. Overall, I think it's a cool hot, sexy little moment. It, it's totally different than what everybody else is wearing. And yet at the same time, it's just like, oh, oh, how interesting, how wonderful. Next up we have Lily Collins who's wearing Tamara Ralph. And this is a black velvet floor length dress. And it has white 3D floral off the shoulder bands. They're lovely, I think they're very sweet. And these sort of metal pieces that create roses that sort of pipe this deep little plunge and the neckline. It's cool, I think it's chic, I think it's elegant, I think it's easy, I think it's understated, I think it's understandable. Do I maybe wish there was a little bit of the silver hardware maybe just in the center of a few of those fabric flowers on the side? Yeah, because I think it would bring in the hardware because it does feel a little bit intriguing that you have flowers that are right next to each other but they're totally different, they don't really correlate whatsoever. So yeah, I think that could have helped a little bit to just play the storyline all together, but I think it's a nice dress. I don't hate it. It's certainly not super duper boring. Next up we have Margot Robbie who is wearing Armani Privé and it is a strapless black dress with you guessed it, a strip of pink down the center in silk that is piped in black sequins and also the neckline is also piped in sequins. I do definitely think it's probably a Barbie reference. And when I first saw it, I was kind of like, mm, it's blah, it's not really intriguing to me whatsoever, to be completely honest with you. The more and more that I look at it, the more and more 
I kind of think that the strip of pink in the center, which is obviously meant to contour the body through the use of the black, that's not radical. A lot of designers have done that throughout the ages. I do think though that there's some element of it to me where the pink sort of plays into like maybe Barbie packaging or just this idea of that sort of hourglass shape and figure of Barbie without it being an hourglass shaped pink dress. Rather that pink strip sort of plays on this idea of contouring the body and contouring Barbie and, and things like that. It's not a radical dress. I'm not really super excited by it, but I do think she looks nice. I do think that it, it's incorporating Barbie without feeling in your face. Barbie 1975 reference. You're still keeping the understanding of what's going on. And I, I gotta respect that. I really do have to. Next up we have Rami Malek who's wearing Xenia. Now Xenia is the Spanish tailoring brand. I'm intrigued by it. Listen, I do like the coat because I, I just like Xenia's proportions as of recently. I think they're really lovely. I like the color work. And then on top of it, I'm trying to figure out if that's a pleated jacket. But there's this thing again about Xenia and portions and they've kind of like just ever so slightly gone from 100% portion to 125. They're just kind of oversized, kind of a little bit baggy and I am really intrigued by it. The blazer underneath this black jacket is navy blue as most of the suit is, but it has some sort of little, I wonder if those are pinstripes or if they're pleats. I think that they're probably pinstripes, but I am intrigued by it. I do think it's cool. And then I think there maybe is a jacket layered underneath or the fact that the jacket on top that is pinstripe is sort of curved. And then there's another jacket or another piece of fabric underneath that is much straighter and sort of creates a sharper angle is intriguing to me. Maybe that's a waistcoat. I don't really understand it. I do love the fact that the shirt is blue and the bow tie is blue underneath. I feel like that's been something we've been seeing a lot for men on the carpet. And I don't know if I understand the pant though. I don't get why they bunch up like that. I almost wish either they'd be wider or they just would have been hemmed slightly higher. If they were wider, I would understand the bagging up at the shoe, but I don't understand because of the size of the pant leg, why you would want them to crunch up there. And I understand the bagginess and the oversize, and that's why I kind of precluded all of us in that, but, I don't really get it. The black and the navy blue, again, I don't really love, but as opposed to the earlier black and navy blue, at least the shoe and the coat work together. It's not my favorite look, to be completely honest. I feel like I've seen better Xenia moments, but I don't hate it and I'm intrigued by certain elements, but like the pant situation needs to be addressed. Next up we have Rosamund Pike. She's wearing Dior, a little Christian moment. To me, the silhouette, very Dior, very, very quintessential 1947 new look. Obviously it doesn't have like a jacket and a bar jacket and all that, but I think that is wasp waist, big flare skirt, but it's done in these little beautiful micro pleats. Again, we think about Maria Grazia and we think about Pier Paolo Piccioli. They both were at Valentino and so I do understand why you have these sort of little micro pleat moments. I just think it's funny that on the same carpet, those two designers that used to work together did a similar technique. I do think the color is really, really lovely in Roseman. I think that color really works. I feel like it's almost like a grayish blue. It's, it's a little dour, which to me also feels a little bit Dior. Then you can see this sort of beige bra underneath and that I don't really understand why that's visible. I think it personally for me throws off the dress. I don't really get it. The shoes, I don't know. I, I don't love, I feel like we were seeing a lot of T-length lately, but like I also, it's whatever. I'm not like hating on them entirely, but I don't really understand the bra thing. I don't get it. I really don't get it. I do, again, color great, texture great. The styling choices though, a little strange, a little odd, not really understanding those. Next up, we have Ryan Gosling, who is wearing Gucci as well. Listen, again, we were just talking about Salvador de Sarno. I like the fact that Ryan is in this full white suit and just the piping is in this red, this rosso, which is the Ancora Rosso, which is red again. And it's what Sabato based his first collection on, this, this color. And so I think it's cool. I think it's fun. I think it's a nice, easy, subtle way to bring in one of the signature colors of Gucci, but it doesn't have to be a red suit. Rather, let the piping, let the contrast really work and, and be the sort of centerpiece. And I think it's pretty nice. The shoe, I don't know. I wish we could have done a shiny patent leather red shoe. Personally for me, I just think that that it, it would have lent itself to be a little bit more a pop and a moment and brings that red all together. Even if it's not something that's gonna be super duper commercial, I think it would be cool to see. And again, a lot of that first 
men's and women's collection had a lot of those patent leather, those really shiny leathers in it. So I feel like, again, it just, it would work. I also think the black against the white really hits hard when there's no other black throughout the rest of the look. It just, it doesn't work to me. It feels a little bit harsh. As for the actual suit itself, I love it. Good for Ryan. I appreciate what he's doing. He's making little fashion moves and I'm happy to see it. And finally, we have Taylor Russell wearing Lo Weve. She's just, She's the star. Here's my thing about Loewe. It's a brand that in reality, like we have beautiful red carpet moments, but it's not really a brand that's super duper red carpet associated or centric. And it's just great, in my opinion, to see Jonathan Anderson and Loewe really like turn out good, solid moments. It's not every single carpet that you see Loewe. I love this white halter neck top that then dips into this feather encrusted belt skirt thing and then the feathers drop right at the hem as well. I love the fact that you get to see a lot of body. I think it's chic. I think it helps to sort of, again, contour the body. It really accentuates the bust area. I think the feathers at the waist also just sort of are that little bit weird, a little bit of wild. To me also maybe a little 1930s nod, sirens of the silver screen and all of that where you have these beautiful sort of feathered sheer and light moments, although I know that this dress is opaque. And I like the fact that, again, the feathers constitute themselves right at the hem, sort of draws it all in. It has a little showgirl feel to it. And at the same time, it's not, it's a little bit out there, a little bit weird, but she still looks beautiful. It still has a sex appeal to it. It still has bombshell qualities. I gotta respect Taylor Russell. She definitely goes for it most of the time. All right, so let's talk about best and worst. All right, on the best list, I'm gonna put Taylor Russell. I'm gonna put Emily Blunt. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put Florence Pugh, Hannah Waddingham, Lashana Lynch. I really like that. Kate Blanchett. Oh, and then for the men, I'm gonna put Bradley Cooper in there. Killian Murphy. As for worst, okay. Ayo Edebri, Coleman Domingo, that was rough. That was tough. Carrie Mulligan is just like, really not interesting. Emma Corrin, only because like I have to, and Emma Stone also because like I have to. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, let me know what you thought of all the BAFTA looks in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.